Hello and welcome to this video in which I will explain some basic concepts regarding the plotting of compositional data in ternary plots. Sedimentary petrologists have always loved and still love ternary plots, where there have been many different suggestions on the actual position, size and names of the fields within the ternary plots, they all agree on one thing. They have three corners that most commonly refer to the Q, F and L poles. Q, F and L refer to the so-called framework grains, which, as their name suggests, are the most important sedimentary rock forming constituents. Q refers to quartz. F refers to feldspar and comprises both the plagioclase and the alkali feldspar group. And L means lithic fragments or simply lithics. You will find also RF as an abbreviation, which means rock fragment. These are fragments of other rocks that were broken down into roughly sand-sized particles. These may be igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic in origin. These three types of framework grains, Q, F, and L, form the poles of almost all ternary plots used in sedimentary petrology. The concept of plotting Q, F, and L in ternary plots started in the middle of the last century, and since then, many different kinds of plots have been developed. Here are just some examples of such plots. There still isn't really any version of the ternary plot that people seem to agree on. Which one you use depends mostly on the school you belong to. I learned according to the folk school and usually work with a folk version, but I commonly see McBride plots around as well. Although the fields have different sizes and positions, they tend to use variations of the three, sometimes four, most frequently used traditional clan names. Quartz Aronite, Arcos, Lith Aronite, and sometimes Grey Wacky. Garzanti campaigned for dropping these traditional names because their origins were based on terms used in the field or even textual observations, and were not strictly based on petrographic observations. He proposed to use composite names that reflect the relative abundance of the three framework grain categories, Q, F, and L. For example, a feldspar-rich sandstone would be called feldspathic sandstone, a quartz-rich sandstone, quartzose sandstone, and a lithic-rich sandstone would be called lithic sandstone. Everything in between would be named according to the relative frequency of the three groups, for example, feldspatholithic or lithofeldspathic sandstone. No matter which plot you decide to use, it is important to follow the detailed instructions provided in the publications that accompany each of these ternary plots. In the following minutes, we will see that there are some challenges when it comes to defining the three poles of the ternary plot. One of the problems is polycrystalline quartz, also known as composite quartz. It consists of two or more quartz domains and can be igneous, metamorphic or sedimentary in origin. In some definitions, polycrystalline quartz is considered a lithic fragment, in others is considered to be quartz. In the full plot, essentially all polycrystalline quartz grains plot as Q, but not chert, which is considered a rock fragment. Garzanti follows a similar definition. Mono and polycrystalline quartz are counted as Q, chert is counted as L. In the Dickinson QMFL plot, only monocrystalline quartz, or QM, is counted as Q. All polycrystalline quartz grains, including chert, are counted as L. In the Dickinson QTFL plot, all quartz grains, including monocrystalline quartz, polycrystalline quartz, and chert, are counted as Q. So let's move on to an example. Let's consider we point counted a thin section. In total, we counted 250 grains. Now we need to recalculate our counts to percentages. These percentages differ depending on which ternary plot we decide to use. In this example, we can assume the procedure to plot in the folk and the Garzanti plot to be the same. Although the Garzanti ternary plot was developed based on the Gazi Dickinson counting method and the folk plot was developed based on the Indiana counting method, in this example the results will be similar. This is because rock fragments, such as metapelites and mafic volcanic rock fragments, are often consisting of mineral phases smaller than 63 microns, 
so they are counted as lithic or as rock fragments in both cases. However, this might change if you have a lot of plutonic rock fragments with larger crystal sizes, in which case you should consult the original publication by Falk. In order to plot our data in the Folk or the Gazanti plot, we first need to ignore all those components that are not considered to be framework grains. For example, any kind of matrix or cement, intrabasinal grains such as gloconide or fossils, and any mineral phases that are susceptible to hydraulic sorting, such as mica or heavy minerals. Then the Q-pole comprises all monocrystalline and all polycrystalline quartz grains, so 106 counts in our case. The F-pole is easy, it's just the sum of Feldspar grain counts. The L-pole comprises all lithic fragments, including chert, so 72 counts in total. This gives us a new sum of 231. Let's transform these counts into percentages now. We end up with 46% Q, 23% F and 31% L. Let's plot these values. 46% Q, 23% F and 31% L. According to the folk plot, the sandstone is a felspathic litharonite. Let's do the same with the Gazanti plot. 46% Q, 23% F, and 31% L. According to Gazanti, this is a felspatho lithoquartzose sandstone. Okay, let's move on to the Dickinson plots. There are two different ways to plot these. One is the QMFL plot and the other one is the QTFL plot. For both plots, Dickinson suggests to ignore intrabasinal grains, heavy minerals and phyllosilicates. So similar to the Folk and the Gazanti approach. However, Dickinson also suggests to ignore carbonate rock fragments. For the QMFL plot, this leaves us with 63 counts of monocrystalline quartz 53% no, sorry, counts of feldspar and a total of 92 counts of lithic fragments, including polycrystalline quartz and chert. This gives a new sum of 208 counts, which we will transform into percentages now. So 30% QM, 26% F and 44% L. For the Dickinson QTFL plot, we sum up all quartz grains, including um, monocrystalline quartz, polycrystalline quartz, and chert, which gives us 133 counts of Q, again 53 counts of F, and 22 counts of L. The new sum is 208 as well. Let's transform these into percentages. 64% of QT, 25% of F, and 11% of L. Okay, time to plot. For the QMFL plot, we use 30% of Q, 26% of F, and 44% of L. This gives us a tectonic provenance of dissected arc. For the QTFL plot, we use 64% of Q, 25% of F, and 11% of L which yields a recycled origin provenance for the same sample. This happens quite frequently with the Dickinson plots and is the main point of criticism. Garzanti suggests not to use these plots as an oracle, but to combine the petrographic observations with other methods to infer the tectonostratigraphic condition of the source area, rather than the geodynamic setting. 